you know what makes me feel old is seeing the faces going, what the are they doing? Oh my god, did anybody do that? Get out. Okay, I'll take this. Hey, what can we sit down? There's actually, I don't know if they're in here, but there was a Jared and Sarah cosplaying somewhere yeah. yeah. oh, together. It was awesome. Yeah. Jared. 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 The I thought you said Jared from Subway. <laughs> oh. I, saw that. I haven't seen that cosplay. No one's even cosplaying him anymore. Sadly. Oh, it's too soon. Don't even talk about sandwiches. Sandwiches are off limits. No, I haven't eaten sandwiches in months. Sandwiches. <laughs> yes. All right, guys, welcome to the voice actor Q&A panel. Give it up for him, guys. I think we'll go down the list, let them introduce themselves. Go ahead. Oh, hi. Hi. <laughs> My name is Josh Greeley. Uh, <laughs> I'm excited to be here. Eric! Eric! Uh, some roles you might know me from uh, the narrator in Armin Arlayer to Attack on Titan. Uh, let's see, uh, the Ducks, uh, yeah, Derry, uh, Komatsu and Toriko. Don't forget saying that! Say Toriko! Uh, uh, so now Mal the Devil is a part-timer, uh, Gino. Uh, Gino Sun, Psychopass, uh, Luke Kresnick in Tales of Zillion 2, uh, Yoshi, Mako Test. Uh, Kurnosuke and Princess Jellyfish. Hello, Hello, bunch of fun stuff. Yay! Who are you? Brita Palencia. Yeah. I'm such a big fan! No, I just play her on TV. Uh, I'm Jeff Lucatino! <laughs> see, no, no. see what you did. No. You see what you did. Jacob, this is why we can't have nice things. Uh, right. <laughs> oh, my throat. Yeah, I'm Sebastian the Black Butler. Oh, God. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Hello? Is this even on? I don't think it's on. Can we, can we turn up the <laughs> No, stop it! Stop it! Abort! 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 <laughs> oh, thank you. It's like not cold, just shit this way. She's in my mic. Good lord. What's going on? Why am I breaking all the microphones, Michelle? Run to action! Vision Street Fighter Cross Tech and Lilia Sotome in the Guided Fate Paradox, the Pokemon wow. Trainer, Super Smash Brothers Brawl, and other stuff. <laughs> hey, microphone. Check. Hello. Can you guys hear me? Uh, my name is Keith Silverstein. Um, what do I voice? I voice uh, Lupin the Third in Jigen's Gravestone. Yeah. Kirby O'Neill in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Woo! Professor Tomoe in the new Sailor Moon, as well as Sailor Moon's dad, of course. Uh, full Frontal in uh, Gundam Unicorn, Char Aznable in the new one, Speedwagon, you like JoJo's Bizarre Cool stuff, Kimi Maro in Naruto, Stark on Bleach, Punk from Resident Evil, and uh, Arvetta the Crocodile from Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, hi guys, I'm Lauren Landa. I'm the voice of Annie from uh, Attack on Titan. Wow, I actually blanked for a second. <laughs> uh, Annie Lehar from Attack on Titan, Sailor Neptune in Sailor Moon, uh, Kasumi in Dead or Alive 5, Leia in Tales of Exilia and Tales of Exilia 2, uh, Lychee Fei Ling in Blaze Blue, um, uh, Kyoko Sakura in Madoka Magica, Scrabble in Spy Girls, and a lot of others. Hi, Hi. I'm a newbie to version of these guys. Hi. Be gentle. Yeah. My name is Damon Mills. Hello. Woo! 
I voice Shinta Mizumura in the anime Holy Night. I voice Selnia's father in Ladies vs. Butlers. I am in a few episodes of Pokemon X Y A. And just a bunch of stuff you probably have not heard of yet. Yeah! Hi everyone, my name is Chris Kasten. Please remain seated. Thank you. It's all right. <laughs> wow. I'm so yes. I'm afraid of this mic. And okay, good. Uh, I'm a writer, director, voice actor, been in stuff like, uh, let's see, Mr. Popo and Dragon Ball Z. Uh, yeah! and, also, uh, and Shu in the uh, DBZ movies. I was also uh, in Tien, but who cares? I was also uh, <laughs> Tien. Uh, there's one. Uh, Glad of Full Metal Alchemist. I uh, was also uh, Holy Roman Empire in Italia. I was also Facebook Shooty in Borderlands 2. I was also uh, Bad Box Art Mega Man in Street Fighter Cross Tekken. And uh, Siegfried and Kenichi and blah 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 blah. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, everybody. My name's Kyle Bear, and I'm uh, also. <laughs> <laughs> Not Tom Likas. <laughs> uh, Ryu in Street Fighter and Smash Brothers. Um, yes, yes. Harogan, Harogan, Harogan. Sorry, I just, I just spam everything. <laughs> I'm having a stroke. Oh my god. Eyes and on bleach. Keep on Naruto and the Gohan and the narrator on Dragon Ball Z. Action. Thank you, that's all the time we have for today. Alright guys, so this is a QA and a panel, so I will be walking around. Uh, we'll just let each guest uh, point in a direction. I'll pick someone who's right now. Okay, I'm picking. Oh, you pick Hi, it's all on me, sorry. Oh, I like putting the blame on you guys. that way. Large creative questions. Things we've never Pick been someone. asked before. All right, guys. So, uh, just, uh, just go ahead and direct your questions. Here you go, your hand is being lifted. Stan, welcome. Uh, yes, hold that. Does anyone else feel like this is let's make a deal right now? <laughs> <laughs> if in your purse you have a safety pin, I give you five hundred dollars. My plan is to be a voice actress. What tips do you have to enter this industry? Don't do it. <laughs> no, seriously, we need the work. We don't need competition. <laughs> Be an actor first. Yes. Get as much training as you possibly can. Uh, whether that be, you know, community theater is always a good call. Uh, if you're in high school, college, whatever, if they have a theater program at your school, go ahead and take that. Any experience is usually good experience. Any any way to learn an, anything new and to increase your repertoire is always going to be helpful. Uh, and, and also, <laughs> if you want if you want to be a voice actor, that's awesome. Don't be an actor, like he says, because a lot of people, and you have to be honest with yourselves. A lot of people want to be voice actors because they think, oh, I really would rather be a stage or a film actor, but I don't think I can do that, so I'll do voice acting instead. Um, <laughs> it's actually really hard because voice acting is, I, in my opinion, one of the hardest types you can do because mm -hmm. you have only your voice to get across what you have your entire body to help you sell the performance to an audience on stage or in front of a camera, and that's hard. It's like being a carpenter and being told to build a house using only a hammer. And if you don't have experience on stage, extensive experience on stage, in workshops, wherever, voice acting will be completely and alienating to you. Also, awesome, keep doing it. Um, keep, keep doing theater all the time, any chance you get. Also, something else. Familiarize yourself with the less than pleasant business side of it. It is 80% of what you do means chasing the work. Actually getting to ply your craft as an actor only is about 20% of the time of what you do. The rest of the time you're auditioning, networking, learning how to navigate the agency scene, and learning where to go where the work is. That's what no one wants to pay attention to. That's 80% of your job. Learn that and learn it well, because otherwise you will make bad decisions and hate your life. And mic drop. <laughs> and there's, well, there's a great book out called Voice Over Voice Actor mm -hmm. by uh, Tara Platt and Yuri Lowenthal, and you can pick that up, on, it's on Amazon, whatever, all over the place. Uh, that, that covers every aspect of it, so there's no way we can answer every question about how to get into it, but if, they, if, one of the, if that's your question, anything about how to get into it stuff, it's all in that book. If you're serious, you should pick it up. Yes. Just uh, do it! Just do it! Thank you very much! Oh my god. What they say? Um, let's see. Oh, yes. The potato-eating girl. Sasha! I know her name, but this girl has literally eaten three potatoes over the course of the last two days just to dedicate to this costume. Give it up, see? Thank you. Why would you eat a potato now in this panel? Why would you eat that potato? And it's my too. Like, you got gas? 
every time I eat a raw potato, I get the worst gas. It's not raw. <laughs> oh, it's not raw. Okay, thank God. It's a boiled, it's boiled potato. Sorry. It could be a baked potato. I have a question for you in the kitchen over here. I want to ask you guys what your favorite Disney movie is. Oh! The, uh, to, and that's sure, the rest okay. of the panel. Okay, yeah, the uh, the very first one that I ever actually saw was actually the very first movie I ever saw in a movie theater in my life, and it was The Little Mermaid when it first came out. Uh, it's a toss-up between Sleeping Beauty and 101 Dalmatians. Oh, I know this is overplayed. I do love Frozen a lot. Frozen's a good movie. Just let it go. Just let it go. I think my favorite's no. really all of our favorites. A Home on the Range, right? <laughs> <laughs> so good. So great. So great. I'm gonna watch it tonight. No, uh, it's between uh, Little Mermaid and uh, Princess and the Frog. No. I I probably say my favorite is Beauty and the Beast. Yeah. yeah. I was a little mermaid then when I was a little boy. <laughs> <laughs> little mermaid! We got two up here for the mermaid. Uh, the Black Cauldron, just kidding. Uh, I was <laughs> Tom Bonner is Kirby. You are not Black Cauldron. I know, I actually do, it's very dark. Uh, no, I, I like uh, I liked Robin Hood because I love a little uh, noodle, noodle Latin Dollar. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop there. There's too many. Uh, there is, yeah. Uh, I don't know if it counts, but Disney owns Pixar, the Toy Story Trilogy. Yeah! It's perfection. Why they're making a part four, I have no idea. Money! We can't, we can't do money. that. Money. Well, I know money, I know, but I mean, <laughs> it, it's so perfect. What did they spend all the money for the first three on? Oh, okay. I like Wreck-It Ralph, too. <laughs> This one. No, that's coming from next door. Oh, okay. Oh. Hello? Okay, we're good. Next. Hello. Hi. Hi. Have you ever had a moment in the booth where you hear a direction from the ADR director and you just want to face palm? <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever gotten a, direct, a direction that made you want to face palm? Yes. Uh. <laughs> When I direct the actors, they never feel like that. <laughs> it's true, I can attest to it. You can get like abstract directions that are uh -huh. like confusing. It's like, I need 16% more. <laughs> Action. Of uh, what? <laughs> that, that delivery was forest green. I'm looking for salmon red. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite was one that the director just goes, uh, let's do that one again and just, uh, make it better. <laughs> so, I, so I was working on a, a game called Dragon's Dogma and it had a ton of dialogue in it. Hey, so people played it, cool. And, uh, on the, on the script, you'd have your line, but then sometimes there'd be a little note on the side, like something you needed to know, like it was urgent or it had to be said loud or it was whispered or whatever that, so one of them, just one in thousands and thousands of pages of script, had the line and then it said exposition chicken style. <laughs> what? And I literally, I don't know what the line was like protect the cart or something like that, so I literally was like, protect the car! <laughs> and I saw the director like lean over and like, what, what the hell was that? You know, I'm sorry, what was that right there? And I'm like, look at the direction. And then, then I see them all laugh. You can't hear them, they're off the button. You see them all laugh. They're like, yeah, we don't need exposition. We don't know what that is either. But just, just give us a line like the rest of them. But it really was exposition chicken style. <laughs> Nobody knows why. Um, I, this, this is not an 18 plus panel, so I can't really, it's not really terrible, but uh, I was playing a very, very, very sexy, sensual character. Holy crap, that is so distracting. Yeah, it is. Huh? Oh. It was me. Oh. <laughs> was this sexy character a jiggly pot? <laughs> No, but one of the directions that I got was, um... This one's really, really Not just because I want to hear it again, but, um, more sex. Oh. It was saying that, you know, whatever. Anyway. During the session. Uh, oh, while I was doing, uh, was it, uh... 
a phone prompt, I believe, or something like that. And they're like, no, it was a narration thing. And then they were like, we want it to be very dramatic, but energetic. <laughs> like, a, like a car commercial, very cool, very suave, but very happy. How do? How do? I don't understand. You know, get contradictory directions in like commercial auditions. It'll say authoritative, but not announcery. Oh, God. <laughs> like the worst okay so for any of us uh, a lot of us do like commercial stuff and we always get like scripts and for auditions and stuff and they always man sometimes they'll give you like more explanation for what they want than they had than there's actual dialogue and you're like all right pick one because you you want like eight different voices on this thing and like oh like a combination between like you know uh j michael tatum and gilbert godfrey just find a balance <laughs> Uh, and Bruce Springsteen, maybe throw a little Bruce Springsteen in, but always, always, like the biggest red flag for me is like, oh, and not announcery. And I'm like, which means you won't announcery because you don't do announcery, and then you hear the same spot on the radio five weeks later, and someone going, and Sunday, Sunday, and you look, oh, you bastard! <laughs> <laughs> you want an announcery! <laughs> it was like they were testing them. That's every copy. Every, every copy. Same, every single Damn. last one. Like, I think the one that I keep getting all the freaking time now is, uh, uh, oh my god, what's the actor's name? True Detective? What was, uh... Oh, uh, yeah, 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 I remember, but I don't Matthew yeah, McConaughey. Uh, all right, all right, all right. Chevy Chase? Woody Harrelson? No, not Woody Harrelson, the other actors. Uh, uh, Ted Hayes? He, he's well known for just being a country boy. That's all he does, just announce it. Yeah. So again? Yeah, okay, I guess, yeah. That's what yeah, I said, yeah. 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 Be McConaughey. But don't be McConaughey. Like that's you get that all the freaking time. You wanted this natural and whatever, and they'll give you an example. Like watch this thing with McConaughey. And but don't do that. But don't do that. Just be inspired by it. Like, <laughs> we have something that's non-copywritery. I heard a story from a, a director recently right. where he was directing a, an actress, and uh, they had the uh, Japanese client was there too, and so she was playing what was described as a very sexy character, and so she gave her best, you know, she gave her best like sexy voice. What is that old mic? Look at that. Is that going to make you talk like this? That yeah, microphone? Yeah, I guess so. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. How's it going, folks? Welcome to the anime panel. That kind of smells to me. So he was... It's not as exciting as I am. You made sad, Mike, sad. So, <laughs> so he's directing this actress, and he's trying to get this sexy voice out of her. So she does her best, like, deep, sexy voice, and the client is like, no, 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 no. Sexy, really sexy. So she gets a little deeper, a little sexier. Like, no, 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 sexy, sexy, sexy. <laughs> so she tries a little more, she's really pushing it now, so the director's like, you know, just go like, like, seriously, adult film sex, just do it, I know, but he keeps asking for sexy, sexy, sexy. So she does it, she goes all this, like, practically moans throughout this. And the guy's like, no, I want sexy, 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 go higher, higher. So she starts raising her pitch, raising her pitch. In the end, she ends up doing an actual, like, a schoolgirl's voice. And the guy's like, yes. <laughs> The way I heard it, they went back and recorded it when the client wasn't there and did it what we in America would consider sexy. Because it's a little different thing. Because she was like in whips and chains. She was like that kind of a character. So they were like, school, he's like, yeah. I know, uncomfortable, right? But that's, that's, that's a true story. It wasn't, it didn't happen to me though. True story. All right, here we go. Two questions. Um, one, um, how do you people respond to criticism from the anti-dub fans who say, you know, oh, you guys just aren't as good as the sub side. And I have a question specifically for Keith. What was your favorite part of playing Johan Liebert in Monster? Yes! Yes! Uh, what was the first question? The first question was, how do we deal, that's for everybody, how do we deal with, how do we deal with dub haters? Dub haters. Anti-dub haters, yeah. Uh, oh. Uh, well, first off, what I usually tell people is that nowadays, technology is absolutely amazing. There's this tiny little button on your remote. It's called audio. <laughs> and you can switch back and forth. So if you really don't like dubs, you can listen to it in sub. It's very yes. simple. Uh, but, I mean, everybody has their own preference, but, you know, we love what we do and we can't please everybody, you know, so... You know, it's whatever they prefer, I guess. I, I heard the Smurfs in French, and I don't know how to speak French, and I can't tell you if the acting was good. So, unless you know Japanese very well, it might be difficult to assume that the performances are wonderful just because you hear a... 
Oh, that's deep. That's good. <laughs> That's true. And I think sometimes the, the original is great and sometimes it's not. I mean, I, I can't tell most of the time, just like Chris was saying, but sometimes when I see the playback, I play a lot of villains and I hear the, like, the Japanese laugh before and then I'm, a lot of times, more times than not, it's like this. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> so I'm saying, you can't just be like, the sub is always better, the acting in Japanese is so great. Sometimes I'm sure it is. Yeah but it's hard to tell. But those are obvious occurrences for me. When I hear that, I'm like, I'm not gonna do that. Yeah. Right, because... Well, and also, let's face it, like the dub haters are also the ones that know the Japanese. They don't speak Japanese, but they know the original subtitled version, and they go out of their way to watch the dub to be pissed off by it. Yes. It's like, it's like they're like the people that will actually show up to a stage show with Rotten Tomatoes to throw, because they're pretty sure it's gonna suck. Uh -huh. But it's really funny to me, because I think it's, it's all about, like, I, I compare like the people that are like, no, it's Devin, and I hate it, it sucked, you ruined my life. Um, first of all, no, we didn't. And and secondly, like, stop being my cat. Because every time I change my furniture arrangement, he's like, no, I hate it, piss on everything. And then five minutes later, he's like, oh, actually, this is fine. I'm gonna sit right here. Um, I, I get it for some. I mean, for those for people who don't speak Japanese uh, at all, um, and there's always the feel like, well, I I know some words in Japanese, like desu. <laughs> But I mean, I work as a, many of us work as adaptive writers too, and we always get asked, like, why, why did you like change the line? Because that's not what it said in the subtitles, and and they think that the subtitles are close to the Japanese. Not necessarily the yeah. case. Subtitles are usually just a summation of what's being said that is cut for time because you don't have time to read paragraphs across the screen when someone's saying something. So it's like the the Cliff Notes version. Uh, and when we have flaps to fill, we have to make certain decisions. And Japanese and English work as languages, not just grammatically and. And tactically, but the way they generate meaning for native speakers are completely different. These are two languages that have evolved completely isolated from each other for hundreds of years, and that have, have developed and kind of matured into their own kind of wealth of, of symbolism and metaphor and blah 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 blah. So what means this to a Japanese person does not connotate across to a, to a, a you know to an English ear that just sounds like a weird non sequitur. Like you know, a great example is calling someone a daikon, which is a radish. Well, in, in Japan, that's understood to be calling someone like what we would say as like wooden or hammy or just bad acting. But to call someone a radish here is just weird. It's funny because it's weird, but no, no one says, oh, stop being a radish. That doesn't happen. <laughs> um, and so like, when we're making these decisions, like for example, if the line is funny, we feel like the subtitled version that sticks as close to the translation as it can, that the job is to give you pure information. Here is what as closely as can be approximated what is being said in the Japanese. But if it's a joke, the dub should make you laugh because that's the spirit of the original that the creators want. So we make those decisions and, and let me speak and ramble for a moment about when you don't speak a particular language and you like a particular show, I get it because the language barrier allows you more freedom to project yourself onto the characters into the universe they exist in because if you're only if you're only getting your sense of the original from just purely tone and subtitles you're getting enough information to get a broad picture of what's going on and who these people are and how they relate to each other but not anything specific or textured enough to go against the version of them you're inclined to build up in your head so it's non-threatening and it's easy and that's awesome there's nothing wrong with that but give the dub a chance because otherwise I feel like it's kind of like having a crush on someone that you're too nervous to interact with. And you're like, well, as long as I never say anything to them, I can believe whatever I want to about them. And, you know, but, and, you know, but like, then it, so I just, I just, people that hate, I, people that hate dubs on principle, I think are thinking about it the wrong way. Uh, go to a stage production and the same people never like, oh my God, I can't believe this guy's playing Hamlet. It's for Lawrence Olivier, I already did like 80 years ago. Like, not how it works, people, not how it works. So, like, the role, a testament to how good a show or a particular part is, speaks to the fact that it can transcend cultural barriers and, and have a home in various languages and various adaptations and still speak and resonate with people. And the fact that, you know, we treat, the, the, the dub haters treat these characters like they're so sensitive, the slightest change ruins them entirely, and that's bullshit. <laughs> because they're awesome, they transcend that, and they speak to all of us, whatever the language is. 
different languages and they will be performed differently. So to compare the two, to me, it doesn't really make much sense. So that's just my opinion. I think that uh, the creators love and, and why wouldn't they? And the studios that back them to create these projects want it to be as mainstream as possible, to serve as big an audience. Think of yourself if you had a story to tell. Would you want it translated and dubbed into someone's native language so that they can discover your story and characters and all that? Mm -hmm. Of course you do. You want to spread it as far and wide as possible. It's like, well, you, well, you censor it, you're doing all this stuff. There's standards on American broadcast television. Thankfully, we're more of an on-demand online nation. We're starting to change, we're more internet-driven, so it's more uncensored, which is great. But the censorship thing, we couldn't get past because the Japanese approved all those edits that you guys complained about. Yep. It, it's not, oh, four kids is evil! It is like, guys, <laughs> they approve the changes made to a One Piece in the original four kids dub and Pokemon, a, any of those show DBZ being watered down for kids. All of those changes were approved by the Japanese. Yep. It's me, Doctor. Play I was the boy you saved that night. <laughs> Just bringing it back, bringing it back to the second half of your question. You asked about Monster, Johan. Um, who's seen Monster here? Yeah. Well, a few people have seen it. Cool, cool, cool. Wish they'd come out with a second half on DVD. Um, you know, the only interesting thing, I mean, I love that character, it was so fun to play, but the, the trippy thing about that character, I like to joke around a lot in between takes and stuff, and Johan was just too serious and too quiet and too, like, in his own head, so I found, like, right away at the first session I had that I couldn't joke around in between, and I had to, Patrick Seitz was directing, and I had to tell him, like, hey, I don't want you to think I'm sick or anything's wrong with me, I'm just not going to joke around between takes, because it takes me too much time and concentration to kind of get back down to that zone of where he is. Um, but I loved, I loved playing him. I just, that's, he's the one character I had to like focus, I think, the most, and really just kind of be weird. Like, I was just, I mean, my eyes got weird. I was just weird in the booth, so. Yeah, it was a fun series, I liked it. She was a monster. How was your mom? Mom. Hey, hi, question. Hi. Um, if you play video games, what kind of video games do you see play? If you play video games, what kind of video games? Super Smash Bros. I play the ones that <laughs> Nowadays, like uh, Arkham Knight, they usually play a lot of things on my phone to kill time on long plane flights. Like Bejeweled and Temple Run. And, uh, yeah, things like that. But I, 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 love, I love games. I'm not a good gamer, though. I'm a casual gamer. I button mash. I love fighting games. I love first-person shooters, but I'm not a good ally to have on your team. I'm just like, I'm here to support you. Yay! I'm the first one headshot, though, and when you play Call of Duty, I'm just like, oh, okay. Not stuff I'm in. I, it's hard because, like, for example, Borderlands 2, like, the whole bit with Sir Hammerlock, that was fun to do, but playing it, I'm like, oh, my God, shut up, me. I've got this. God, mute that guy. He's so annoying. Um, yeah, I, I'm a fighting game type of person. Again, I, I'm terrible at them. I, I suck. Like, for me, I'm, I remember Pong. And I never mastered that. And I was like... Oh. So, yeah. Plus, we don't have time. We never have time. Tomb Raider. I love the Tomb Raider games. Uh, uh, Skyrim, I played a lot of Skyrim. Skyrim was awesome. Yeah, do you guys get to the Cloud District very often? Yeah. Uh, what am I saying? Of course you don't. Um, and then uh, the one I'm totally addicted to now is not on any console. It's Marvel Puzzle Quest. And I, I can't stop playing Marvel Puzzle Quest. Don't play it. Stay away from it. It will suck you in. Uh, uh, anything from platformers to MMOs. I've been playing games my whole life. It's kind of been one of my biggest and favorite pastimes. Uh, lately, uh, we're really excited for the Star Wars Battlefront. You know, coming out next month. Like, I just uh, cannot freaking wait. Uh, other than that, like strategy games and uh, flight simulators, space flight simulators like Elite Dangerous and Star Citizen that are coming out soon. I liked an old game. Does anybody remember Thief? Yeah! yeah. I liked Thief. I liked, uh, you know, uh, uh, McGee's Alice. I thought that was a lot of fun. Uh, very dark. Uh, kind of freaky. Uh, what else? I liked the Grand Theft Auto games. I thought they were fun. Uh, I also, I liked Final Fantasy. I, I sucked at them. Uh, majorly because I don't level up. I, I, I don't like leveling up, I just want to get on with the story, but it doesn't work. Uh, uh, let's see, what else? Um, I don't have any games on my phone. Oh yeah, remember Flappy Bird? Oh god. No. 
Uh, there's this new game that just came out called uh, Mike Tyson's Punch Out. <laughs> And there's this character called Ball Boy. It's a, anyway, no, I'm obviously not much of a gamer at all, but I like scary things and scary movies and stuff like that. So my gateway drug in the door would be something like a scary video game. That's what I want. So, does anybody have, well, you beat me to it. Does anybody have any, like, I need like top three scary video games and I'll learn how to play. Five Nights at Freddy's. Jason. From, from here, it sounds like, uh, could you guys give me a suggestion? Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you gotta be more specific. Chris, do you, do you want... like? Do you like any sort of like? Uh, did, were you a fan of the Alien series at all? Do you yeah. like Alien? Oh, oh, yeah. dude, Alien Isolation. Okay, Alien Isolation. Okay, cool. Are, are you? Until dawn. Until dawn. Until dawn. Yes. Okay, I got three. Yeah, I have a feeling you'd be a fan of like the survival horror games. So uh, I think you you'd probably really enjoy like the survival horror genre. Yeah. Was it? I heard that Amnesia was pretty freaky. Yes. Yeah. Fatal, Fatal Frame. Fatal Frame. I've heard of that too. Fatal Frame. Is Cooking Mama scary? Is that scary? <laughs> Okay, there's a lot of people playing to you, but I already have a question about it, so I will come to you next. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I have a question for uh, Kaysen. For who? Kaysen. Oh, Kaysen. I am prepared to receive <laughs> Thank your you. question. Uh, I'm just going to keep this... Uh, for anyone but the... Wait, I think someone's <laughs> delivering a child. <laughs> And I think his name is George. Go ahead. <laughs> I said, keep it simple, don't spoil it for anyone, but the final part of Sword Art Online 2, what were your thoughts on it? Well, I thought it was touching. I mean, I thought it was beautiful. I loved uh, being a part of that show, and I thought it was uh, a beautiful way to end the series, and I loved it. I mean, it's a, a real tear checker. Yeah. Very sad. Very bittersweet. And that's what I think about. Now back to that guy delivering of it. Those guys. He's crowning. <laughs> For everyone, if you could request any member of the host club, who would it be and why? <laughs> Kyoya was my absolute favorite. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody else is like, what? <laughs> I haven't seen it. I'm Matsui. I'm in it and I haven't seen it. Uh, Miyoka? Uh, Akira. Tetsuo, then. Tamaki. <laughs> John? Is there a John in this? George! It's George! George. Who does Patrick Sykes play? <laughs> Who's, that's the one. That's the one. I know he's not a host. Of course he's not a host. That's silly. I was just kidding. Just testing you. Uh, honey. Definitely honey. Yeah, come on, honey! Spike Spiegel. Alucard. I'm not pushing on you. Oh, I like the twins. I love the twins. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. So, so, by the way, I, I really love rhythm games. Um, <laughs> I, this is how you can answer the question. Uh, I, I like Rhythm Heaven, Guitar Hero, Rock Band. I, I, like my, I play piano, so like Guitar Hero is easy. Because for guitar players, it doesn't really work. Who play guitar, you know. I was in so. Metroid! Metroid! Metroid. 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 The game is awesome. Summers. <laughs> my favorite from uh, The Armored Titan. <laughs> I go with the twins. I think uh, that's really cool. <laughs> they're just they're fun, and I, I love their 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 dynamic. It's really cool. I think they they're like they're crazy. They're Tomicky crazy, but kill you smart. So it's like the best and worst of both worlds. So I love them. I love the twins. What? Pottery. Aww. Aww, that's a good choice. All right, is that everyone? All right. Not you. No. Not me. I don't count. Uh, the twins. Yes. Um, I want to know if you had to do anything like super crazy to get into character and to act a certain way. Squat thrusts. 
And the obligatory kegels. Uh, yeah, that's what, I, that's what I do. You run around the studio three times doing high kicks while singing I'm a Little Teapot. <laughs> it works out the core. Yeah. Uh, so like, uh, for Princess Jellyfish, I had to do a little bit of physicality in the booth in order to, to differentiate between the two different types. Like, like if he was, if, if Kuranosuke was just straight up Kura, in just regular mode, boy mode or whatever, I would just stand up straight and uh, just very relaxed, hands in my pockets, be like, hey, yeah, I'm Kurnoske, how's it going? But when he was in drag mode, I'd have my hands on my hips and be leaning up against the... like, oh, it's fabulous, darling, it's just great, you look wonderful. <laughs> So, okay, so most of you know the, the Snuggie story, right? The French Snuggie story. Like, I had, I was, I was. No, Tatum, I don't know the Snuggie Shut story. Shut up. I'll be real quick about it because there's an addendum that's, I think, really fun that I just recently discovered. So, several years ago, we were recording, like, the second season of, of Italia. I came in one afternoon, and for some reason, the accent just wasn't coming out well. And so, they, I, I just happened to see a blue Snuggie on the floor that someone had left, and I'm like, I'm going to put this on. I was just getting a weird vibe from it. And the minute I put it on, the accent came out. And thereafter, I was contractually obligated to wear the Snuggie every time. Uh, because the show's director thought it was hysterical. A grown man in a blue, ridiculous Snuggie, which is basically just a backward coat. Um, and I'm like, oh, la, la, la. So I told that story on a panel that uh, was, I believe, in Baltimore several years ago, where the several members of the dub cast got to uh, hobnob with several members of, the, of several of the seiyu and the show's creator on the same panel. And we had an interpreter that was uh, interpreting in real time, and it was really, really cool. And when I told that story, the show's creator kept looking at me and going, <laughs> 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 and of which I was deeply flattered by. Three years later, we're doing the latest season of it, and there's a scene, very brief, like, blink you know, miss it moment, where they're all having a slumber party, and so help me God, France is the only one in a Snuggie. <laughs> I was recording for my first anime. They gave me lots of food to eat for a food scene, and I had to keep eating, and then I got full. So. <laughs> I'm boring, I'm sorry. <laughs> Nothing else? No, I don't think so. All right, here you go. Right, hello. Hi, Nick. Hi. So, what is the darkest aspect of your personality you've ever tapped into for a character? Oh. Uh, thanks for bringing the room down. <laughs> what we start darkest, the darkest aspect. <coughs> now, Bruni have a problem. Because oh. we're uh. not taking the pill. No, it's not my darkest aspect. <laughs> I was trying to think dark. We can't talk about Jared, so I had to go somewhere else. <laughs> Forty people coming up. <laughs> um, I, it's not okay. So it's dark, not in the sense that it was like a side of my personality, but but I, I've told this before. But uh, I played Okabe uh, in Science Gate, which is very, the show is very very close to my heart. Keaton out there, giving me support. We love you. Um, I, uh, the thing about that show is it's very raw, very real, and it was one of the most transformative experiences I had in the booth because the character was so very much the kind of character you'd normally only get to play on stage or something like that. It was just that complicated and that, that nuanced. Um, and I, that show, I just lived and breathed it for months because I was writing it and recording the main character, so it was like eight hours a day and then five hours at night to, 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 it was just insane. So I kind of didn't know where he ended and I began after a while, which shouldn't happen, that's not a good thing. Um, and I was in the booth one day and the, there's an episode of it where I just completely broke down because the, the scene where, I don't want to give anything away, but it's a very, very heart wrenching moment where he's in the backseat of the car basically pleading for his life, or pleading for someone else's life, apparel of his own. It's very real and very uh, heart wrenching. I cried my eyes out watching the say you do it. And I, it just got too real for me and I, I lost it the whole, I was just so in the moment that I started just freaking out and I had to like leave the booth and, and splash water in my face and be like, wow, this is kind of psychotic now, this isn't healthy. And I came back in the booth and Colleen, the show's wonderful director, was very supportive of me through that whole process, was like, well, we have two choices, we can get it again, uh, or everything you just did actually worked. 
and fit, and I'm like, uh, let's keep it, I don't care if anyone knows, like, that's what I actually sound like when I'm having a nervous breakdown, so we used it, and that's, if you wanna hear me have a mental breakdown, watch episode 14 of Time Cake. Uh, uh, Armin. Armin was a character that I really kind of had to, like, for the first, uh, before episode nine, when he has his big moment there, and like with this big transformation for his character, from moment one, he is his own worst enemy. He, uh, it's like, yes, he he is filled with courage because he, like he has the courage to you know stand up for his own beliefs with you know uh, nonviolence, especially against right. people. But when it comes to doing something for his friends, he's all in it. He joins the he joins the the cadet corps. He joins the scouts. He does all these things. But throughout the entire process, he sees himself as worthless. Uh, he sees himself as someone who is not worthy of his friends' attention, their love, their protection, anything. He doesn't see himself as their equal. He just sees himself as a burden. And, to, like, I, you kind of have to go into that, too. Yeah. So, like, in, in, the, in the recording process, a lot of times I would just have to, to get into character, I have to repeat this little mental mantra, you're worthless, you're a burden, you're all the, just going through the list. And it, it's... It's like to live in that mindset is one of the most, is, is hell on earth. Like it is one of the most hellish places to live in your mind. And uh, I love, I, I love the arc. Like he totally has to go through that in order to reach, you know, where he does in episode nine and, and then further on. But yeah, that's one of the darkest that I've ever had to go. I posted this on your Facebook when I, when I watched that with my boyfriend, that whole Armin scene with the screaming and everything. I was like, I, I was like, can, can you rewind that? Play that again. I want, wait, I want to see it again. And it was like, it blew my mind, and I freaked out when I watched that scene. So I just want to tell you that was freaking amazing. Oh my god. Hi, my question is Is there a role that you wish you didn't take or that you did take? Yeah, Sailor Moon. <laughs> they offered it. Uh, I want. I want to be Armin. <laughs> uh, one that we did take, or one that oh, we yes. wish we had gotten. Is that? Is that what, what the question was? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. The question is: Is there a role that you did not or did take that you wish you did or did? Oh. <laughs> hmm. uh, well, okay. Let me speak to the, the second one. When it comes to the roles you wish you hadn't take, like, hadn't gotten um like i don't think anyone feels that way because we we come to especially because we come to cons like this and we get to meet you awesome people which is seriously one of the coolest things about what we get to do um and i'm not just saying that to say it like we get to meet people we never would have met otherwise because of this and to be supported and to see all you wonderfully creative people I and mean, it's it's very awesome like most voice actors don't get this kind of treatment it's a very anonymous type of it's a very anonymous profession um but it, it's it's you never know how what may be three hours of recording for you, and then you never touch that show again, is uh, you never know how that's gonna resonate with someone else and mean something to them, so you always take it very seriously. You're never like, ah, oh, God, I hate this character, because there's too many people that, that would love to that character to be played by someone who takes it seriously and feels honored to be able to tell that story. And all of us, I think, feel that way about what we do, even if it's not, even if it's for a show we're not necessarily ourselves the target audience for. Um, because that's, that's what acting is, and if we're ever in the booth, it's about imagination, right? And if, it's, if I can't find something about the character I'm playing to fall in love with and get me through the performance, I, it's a failure of my own imagination and I'm fr I frankly shouldn't be doing what I'm doing. And that's what all of us, I think that's the truth of all of us. I guess, as for roles you wish you could have done. All of them, we're actors. <laughs> yeah, seriously. All the roles are Okay, well, two, two, for the other side of that, the flip side, there—I mean, there have been roles where, like, during the process of recording, like certain certain things that could could make it very stressful. That you know, like sometimes you're sitting there going, "Oh my God, I wish the session would end," because you're just exhausted or something, like whatever. And like, for me, like Yuki in Future Diary was one of the only characters I've ever gotten where I just really was having—I had a horrible time recording it, and not nothing really about the show. Our, our entire recording process was riddled with technical problems. The very first, uh, throughout the entire show, we had no audio. We, we, had, we had no m and because the files that the Japanese had sent us were corrupted. We had the video, it worked fine, 
but whenever we went to record, we had no audio, we had no music, we had no sound effects, no nothing. And yeah, and, and more often than not, whenever I came in to record, I was one of the first people to lay down for whatever pa uh, batch of episodes we were on. So I had no sound, and I had no other actors to play off of. And so, and, and so it was just, yeah, I know, it was, it, was, it was one of the most grueling recording sessions like, that I've ever done. Uh, so yeah. yeah, it was rough. All right, guys, this next one's gonna be the last question here. We are almost out of time. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Blame me, not them. You guys would stay here all night, wouldn't you? Yes. Yes. Good. All right, here we go. Make it great. Make it a good one. No okay. pressure. Question for Keith Silverstein and Kyle Haber. What was it like working with the English version of the Danganronpa games, like Danganronpa and Super Danganronpa 2, when you were Mondo and Soda? Uh, you know, that, it's funny, that, that game, like, I, I knew the name of that, I didn't know anything about that series at the time when I came in for it, and it was one of those, like, rush jobs where they go, like, hey, can you come in tomorrow? Cause this, and this is, I'm gonna give you guys a real answer, because this is the business, so this is the business aspect of it, is sometimes you go in for something, you're like, oh, cool, I know what this is, and they just need you in, like, the very next day, and you do it, you record it, I had a blast doing it, and then it just kind of, I didn't hear much about it. Is that, I know that's not the answer you want to hear, but, um... I remember playing the character, I was happy about the character, I asked him a lot of questions about the, about the game. I didn't work on the series, I know there's a series also, I just worked on one of the games, and then I think Funimation picked up and did another game or another series afterwards. So I had just the one, I was honored to be able to be that, be that character and play that role. You guys obviously are big fans, and I had somebody even who wanted an autograph earlier today who was a fan of that character too, so. Um, that's an example of everything is important and you want to put in your all into it, but some things are just kind of quick, you don't have time to set up for it, you don't have weeks and weeks to do it, you're there for two hours or less, and you lay it down and that's it, and you walk away from it, and you, you hope people, actually it affects people and they like it, so, so hopefully you enjoyed the performance. Awesome. Alright, guys, thank you very much for coming to Voice After q &A. All right, guys, if you have your masquerade to coins, go ahead and go start lining up, because that line is going to be insane. Oh, no, there is no lining up now. There's tokens, so you don't have to worry about it. Thank you once again to all of our voice actors for answering all the questions. We are amazing. I think they have to